Kenneth Polite served as the top federal prosecutor in New Orleans under President Barack Obama's administration and is now President Joe Biden's pick to lead the Department of Justice's criminal division. But whistleblower and former FBI agent Mike Zummer says Polite is not the man for the job and Zummer's not alone in his opposition to Polite's nomination. We've sent a letter to 33 senators uh, expressing our opposition to you know, Mr. Polite's nomination to be the Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division of the U.S. Department of Justice. Zummer says that list of senators includes those on the Judiciary Committee and a handful of others Zummer believes will be sympathetic to women's issues. According to this letter and a PowerPoint presentation sent to the U.S. Senators, five women joined Zummer saying they suffered at the hands of police mismanagement while he was U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Louisiana. Some have come forward with allegations about how federal prosecutors handled the high-profile case against former St. Charles Parish District Attorney Harry Morrell. Morrell was accused of using his position of power to trade leniency for sexual favors. Zummer claims alleged misconduct on the part of prosecutors in the case. He says that misconduct ultimately led to police office making a lenient plea deal with Morrell instead of a more serious racketeering or RICO indictment. We had approval from Washington, D.C., which is required to get any, any RICO charge. And what happened is the local office basically took over. They decided to negotiate with Morrell. And really those negotiations, I believe, were compromised by the U.S. Attorney's Office's own interest in covering up what it had done in 2013 by declining the case and the ethical issues right, then. Is there anything you want to say to the people of St. Charles Parish? The federal investigation into Morrell started years before Polite took office. The prior U.S. attorney had declined the case, but Polite reopened it in the spring of 2014. Morrell eventually pleaded guilty in 2016 to obstruction of justice. And as part of that deal, Morrell made an on-the-record admission that between 2007 and 2009, he solicited sex from defendants in the St. Charles Parish criminal justice system. He also was permanently prohibited from practicing law. During an April 2016 news conference about Morrell's plea deal, police condemned Morrell's actions. A man who perverted his position of power to take sexual advantage of desperate women who needed help. And he did this over and over again. Morrell served less than two years of his three-year sentence and never faced sexual misconduct charges, even though the feds called Morrell a sexual predator. We suspect that this pattern of conduct has been ongoing for many decades. In fact, we will never know the full extent of it. In his PowerPoint presentation to senators opposing Polite's nomination, Zummer says federal investigators found the former St. Charles DA had solicited sexual favors from 22 women. Zummer says five of the victims had oral sex with Morrell, including one by physical force. We spoke with that woman who also opposes Polite's nomination. She does not want to be identified because she's afraid of retaliation. We will refer to her as Carla. We were involved in a case and we actually won the case for child support and uh, Harry Morrell wanted to go out for lunch and celebrate the case and he proceeded to unzip his pants and grab my neck and push my <clears throat> head down and force me to do an act and I was trying not to and he said you'll never get the money unless you do this and I needed the money for my kids. I was excited when Ken Polite took over the Harry Morrell case. I was told that there would be justice and I believed in him and unfortunately that did not happen. Um, I really had high expectations with him. I did and you know, he made a deal with the devil. The family of Danielle Kai McGovern also signed the letter opposing police confirmation. Come here, we got 10 minutes. Can you kiss me? Um, uh -huh. McGovern recorded undercover video as part of the FBI investigation into Morrell. She died of an overdose in 2013, the day after her story went public. She got into trouble and, you know, the district attorney's job is to, to prosecute and to reform. You know, so when she fell into his lap at 
27. He should have helped her. That's what I wanted. I didn't want him to, to go the exact opposite route and say, hey, this is really bad. But you know what? If you just get on your knees, I'll make it go away. And at 27 years old, you know what she did? She called the cops. <laughs> Danielle McGovern, I need to make a sexual harassment charge on Harry Morrell. The district attorney? The district attorney, yes. To take on what she did was very hard for her. I mean, I remember helping her wire up her bra. And I'm just like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? And she's like, yes, yeah, Izzy, I gotta do this. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. Order me. This is all she gets for all she did. You know, and and she she is a hero because what she did do was bring him down. That's what she did. Zummer, who is an attorney, says police office never notified or conferred with Morell's 22 victims or McGovern's family about the plea bargaining with Morell, something he believes is in violation of the Crime Victims' Rights Act. In his correspondence with U.S. Senators, Zummer cites specific rights in the code he believes were violated. That being, victims have the reasonable right to confer with the attorney for the government in the case and the right to be informed in a timely manner of any plea bargain or deferred prosecution agreement. I was trying to keep them advised of what was going on by phone, but the U.S. Attorney's Office wasn't telling them what was going on. Zummer claims police office also violated the Crime Victims' Rights Act by pressuring Carla and McGovern's mother to not speak at Morell's sentencing hearing. And then seeing that happen, you know, was just despicable. Mr. Police Office contacted me and told me that um, we were not going to be able to testify. I didn't like that answer. I wanted to testify for my healing process. Zummer. Carla and McGovern's family asked senators for the opportunity to testify at police confirmation hearings. I am absolutely against Mr. Poli getting this position because if he can make a deal with the folks in New Orleans and St. Charles Parish, what kind of deal can he make when he gets to D.C.? He's not in a position right now, I feel, to, um, to step up into this powerful place. If he couldn't do his job here, I don't know how he's supposed to do it for our nation. Former Assistant U.S. Attorney James Baer, who worked in police office, also wrote a letter regarding police confirmation. But he wrote to the Judiciary Committee chair in strong support of police nomination. Baer worked on the Morrell case with Zummer and says the case was not easy. He outlined challenges prosecuting Morrell, including the key witness in the case who wore a wire, died unexpectedly, and that many of the acts occurred well beyond any statute of limitations. Bear says without police leadership, Morrell wouldn't have served jail time, been disbarred, and exposed to the public. He also adds there would have been no justice for the victims. Zummer says coming forward cost him his FBI career after his firing last May, but he says it's a battle worth fighting. The one division that is going to deal with victims, witnesses, and whistleblowers the most, you know, shouldn't be led by the guy who really couldn't protect victims and witnesses. And, you know, as the whistleblower, um, I certainly don't think he's done me, you know, any favors. So, in fact, actually, his office has participated in the censorship of what I've tried to get out to the public. We reached out to police, but the Department of Justice declined comment on his behalf and did point us to letters of support for police, including Bear's letter, as well as another written by two former FBI special agents who worked with police. Kimberly Kurth, Fox 8, Local First.